got to get one of these things, man. Something for the hot. You know? You guys put honey in your tea. I don't know, man. I got this local, local honey beekeeper cat. So, Yeah, this is, I just want to talk about Slayer, so we'll rank them, um, but, you know, these records are basically, to me, just uh, moments in time, and they all mean kind of different things, and, and uh, yeah, there's definitely, there's definitely a couple of stinkers in there, so we'll get those out of the way right away, but, um, you want to talk about this thing? I don't know. I was happy they did it. I'm, I was happy they did it at least. Um, something came out. There's some really good songs on it. Uh, I don't, I, I, you know, I don't know. There's some really bad lyrics. Kind of. That's, that's ultimately um, a lot of what ruins the, the, some of the latter work for me is just some of the I don't know, terrible. There's just some terrible lyrics. It just got corny after a little while with some of the social talk and some of the wordplay. American. Conspiracy. I know those are on other albums, but does he do it on this one? I, uh, I don't even know. I mean, You Against You is a pretty bad song title. I don't know. And Repentless. That's just... I don't know, whatever. But yeah, that's we'll get that out of the way. That's you know the my least favorite one. I don't even know how many of these we're doing here, but um, yeah, that's my least favorite favorite one. Um, I appreciate Gary on that um, doing solos and stuff, but uh, again, probably the like, I got a little of enjoy, enjoyment out of it, but I don't go back to that much. Um, all right, these are, and this I'm doing in my rules, man. I'm just including what I got uh, to the level of, uh, let's call it enjoyment. This thing, undisputed attitude, right? You know it's called, you know. uh, it is what it is. I didn't have much ex expectation. People don't like Gemini. I love Gemini. I don't care. It, it, it's a little formulaic, and they kind of kept using that mid-tempo thing in a lot of songs, and that got lame, but... Uh, and there's good... It's great. It's energetic as hell as far as what it is, but I didn't get much out of this. Um, 
it's it's good for what it is. It's really good for what it is. But I didn't get much out of that. All right, I'm not gonna bore everybody with putting shit away. All right, this thing will get out of the way. Diabolus. Yeah, we'll get this out of the way. This was a real. I, I wasn't aware. This was the first real disappointment. Me and my best friend. Uh, you know, I was 23 or 22 when this came out. 98. Turning 23. But, um, yeah, this thing. Uh, the first single I heard on college radio a couple days before it was coming out, and needless to say, that was... I was drinking at the time, and man, I, I had to work the next day, and that was not a, a good drinking. That was... That was a, so yeah, and there is great songs on this. The bookends on it are fantastic. Um, the opening track is fantastic, and the and point the last track is fantastic. But um, the middle of it, it's like there's a couple okay songs on it. But they're okay. They're good. They're fine. And then there's two on there that should just never have made it on the record. And there's two on that Japanese release that should have replaced it. Um, I don't feel like digging that out. But there's a Japanese release of that record that has two extra songs on that. And uh, those two songs are great. And they could have replaced whatever Death's Head and Stain of Mind was the song I heard. And that's a, that's that was that was that was tough, man. That was ugh. I think a lot of people agree with that. Again, actually, I'm not gonna do that one. Yet. I'm not gonna do that one. I skipped it. This thing was, I got enjoyment out of it when it first came out. World Tainted Blood. I got enjoyment from when it first came out. Talk about a disappointing gatefold. Um, yeah, Unit 731 is awesome. Beauty Through Order, awesome. Human Strain is awesome. Psychopathy Red is awesome. Playing with Dolls is awesome. I didn't have a, I don't have a problem with that song title. Um, I don't know. That's a Jeff, and, I, and all these songs that I just mentioned are Jeff's songs. Nothing against Carrie's songs. There are some good songs on here, but. I, I have a weird, I don't like, I'm, I don't, I, I'm not one to complain about production, but there's something wrong with the way this, it, it could have been captured better. It's something, something's just not, I don't like the snare drum on it, which I usually don't have an opinion of, but for some reason it just, you have Dave Lombardo playing drums on this and it's not as engaging as it should be but still a good record still a good record but i remember i got a lot of enjoyment out of it but it kind of faded when it really settled i sound disappointing today it's it's not i'm a big slayer fan and i like all their stuff but um i'm just going by as albums came out i remember you know how long the excitement sustained and originally getting hit with like, okay, this is kind of disappointing. This is good. This isn't. So kind of the level of of my perception at the time, and then how long I got a little bit of euphoria out out of each record. So anyway, that lasted for a little while. This next again, good record, but we started getting into that. Cons what is that damn song? Conspiracy. Oh God. And uh, Eyes of the Insane could have been better if the vocal pattern was better. I don't know. Skeleton Christ was awesome. There's good songs on this. Flesh Storm seems like it's going to be really good, but it's, I don't know, it's really, it's good. It's just, they're getting formulaic in this. And there's not really much in, in surprise. So if you came in on this record, and I know, you know, younger kids, younger guys would come in on this record and they really liked it. And I understand that. I understand that. And that's cool. But it's a good record. Again, they're just getting, uh, in, you know, into that 
kind of formula in it. I don't know. There's really good songs on it, but. I got a lot out of this. God hates us all. I got a lot out of this. This, this was because Diabolus hit so, so bad. Diabolus hit so bad that when this came out, I think, uh, you know, I was like 25 or something, 26. This was, and well, and obviously it came out on the notori notorious 9-11 uh, day. Um, real boring, short side story. I ran to the, well, I drove to the record store the night before because I knew they would have it and I knew the store owner. So I went right before I closed and I asked him, dude, just sell me this. You're, I can't come in the morning. And his name was Gene and he's been selling me records since I was a little kid. So he was like, all right, man. He's like, just kind of don't, you know, put it on the internet or something. And I was, he's like, I just can't. And I was like, I got it, man. I'm not even going to play it for anybody. So he's like, all right, here. So at nine o'clock at night before a store closed, I got home and I got to listen to this before most of the world, uh, anyway, uh, got a tangible copy of it and then shit hit the fan the next morning. But this, this, this was hope and, uh, it came, you know, um, disciples great. Um, and, and a lot of it's a little immature, but the energy got me and, and Tom came back with this fierce, he started it in Undisputed. He had a great punk screaming voice. He really, no pun intended, went for the throat on this. He's screaming his head off, man. It's loose and it's all over the place and it seems, you know, almost like hardcore in a way. But I just, I like the fact that they found something. And whatever, I mean, their guitars are tuned a little lower in some of the songs or whatever. So it's, people think it sounds like new metal, but. You got to remember, man, a lot of that new metal, like those guys kind of came up with a lot of those kind of riffs earlier on. It was just not attacked in that certain way. So they drop tuned their guitars and a lot of that stuff. I mean, and some of the beats got a little bit more opened up and less Slayer-esque, but it's not that far removed from what they had done in the past. Just executed a little bit differently and it sounds a little bit different because you got hit with all this corn and all this other stuff. Not to say that they didn't take from who those guys they were torn with. And I think they took a lot from Machine Head because they were torn with Machine Head in 94. And I know they, they really took to that. So anyway. Um, yeah. Now we're going to start getting people irritated. But I'm going to go with. I don't have, I cannot find my vinyl copy of this. I know it's here, but I think it must be behind one of these. I don't know if I mixed it up and put it behind one of these, but all I got is this stupid CD, but obviously the significance of this thing, and this is, they're showing their influences on this, and I can't say anything on about this that you haven't heard in a, in a million other uh, Slayer videos of, of dudes talking about it. You know, this, <clears throat> excuse me, the Slayer sounds coming in this black magic, obviously, you know, um, they're really starting to get into um, what Slayer would uh, eventually come to sound like. Fight Till Death, awesome. I mean, every song on here is is awesome for what it is. It's just Judas Priest and sped up um, a lot of it. So, again, that's where that sits. Next, you know, we can talk about this too, right now. We'll go here. Divine intervention. Decadent. Decadent. This was important when it came out, man. This was important for me. I got some crazy, weird metal, like iron case of this CD hanging up in my living room. It was like 10,000 made in like 91 or whatever this came out, 91. So yeah, this was important too, man. This was really important. And I used to play guitar to this a lot. 
um, when I was learning Slayer songs because after you learned them at album speed, if you could play them to this, it was uh, the down picking. If you tried to play it proper, you see a lot of people playing Slayer songs and they don't down pick the shit and that's, that's faking it. It's faking it. You can't do it. You can't do it. But anyway, yeah, if you could play to this at the time, that was pretty good. Time. Next, this guy here. This would really uh, rank higher to me. This would probably be number one to me in order of significance in my life. Um, what I mean was. When this came out, I was already kind of listening to Slayer, but I was pretending to like Slayer because it was the right thing to do when my older friends were around. Although the truth was, I didn't, I couldn't really understand Raining Blood when I first heard it. I was able to get like DRI and Dead Kennedys and stuff like that, and Suicidal Tendencies was important, and Anthrax, but Slayer kind of was... On an Emerson cassette deck in 1986, 87, for what I was capable of understanding, Raining Blood was too much. Then in 1988, I heard this right when it came out, and I was so happy to like Slayer because I understood, because it started out a little bit just moody and creepy with South of Heaven before you got into Silent Scream. And it kind of taught my brain how to really understand this stuff. Um... 12 years old or whatever. But this was extremely important. Every song on this is extremely important. So that sits there. Next, we're going here. Oh, oh yeah. Definitely massive level of the secret. We're going here. Every song on here is incredible. This is a probably their best record. If you really want to get into like accessibility and production and guitar solos, everything on here is is if you can't ingest this, you'll never be able to ingest any any Slayer. But um, you know, a lot of people can will say they like this one and some no, none of the other ones or whatever. Um, just, you know, those middle tracks are um, not celebrated enough. Blood Red, Expendable Youth, Spirit in Black. I mean, come on. There's so many songs on here that are. But every song on there could be a single. Every song on there could be a single. All right, now we're, what the hell are you doing, Mike? This really, I'm doing this one now because... Everybody hated it. And I think it's, it's amazing. I think it's amazing. This record is criminally unappreciated. And I don't understand why. Well, it's not as, it doesn't have the production of that one. Well, who cares? It's a thrash album. What the hell are you talking about? And it's an analog recording, man, classic. They don't even like this record. Sex Murder Art, Fictional Reality, 213, Serenity and Murder. Every song on here. Ditto Head, Killing Fields is amazing. It's just the only reason why people didn't like it is because they started the record out and it started out intense with the double bass, first riff, and then it went odd time and people were like, I'm out. And then they didn't go to the rest of the record. That's how I feel about this. It's a little loose. It's a little weird, a little crazy, but Tom starts screaming on this one. Really lets his vocals out. And uh, this is criminally underappreciated. I know I'll get a little bit of flack about that, but that's why I did it. And do we need to state the obvious? You know, we know where we're going with this. I guess this would be number three because I got two left in order of significance 
Yeah. Rain and blood. We don't even need to talk about this. I mean, it changed the face of music. It did. It changed a lot. I mean, even Public Enemy was using this thing. You know? It did. It, it, it changed everything. I mean, and, and uh, you know, the death metal guys came out of that, and they'll all tell you that. You know? Once people really could understand what the hell that thing was and watching that live. Those shows in New York at the Ritz are still legendary, even just to watch on a shitty VHS tape. It's madness. Total madness. All right. Level of significance. Level of significance. Hello 8th, 1985. Hello 8th, 1985. What do you... This on, I mean, the intro alone at the time was horrifying, and it was like a thing like you just put it on to get creeped out, you know. For 1985, for this to come out, it's it's praise of death. It's so ahead of its time. It's insane. And the yeah, well, the production, yeah, well, the production of this makes this makes it that creepy, you know. I mean, Crips of Eternity, every song, the Necrophiliac, that's definitely prompt so many death metal bands to start. I mean, that's a formula borderline for some of the at the gate stuff and then the metallic hardcore or metalcore, whatever you want to call it, to come later. I mean, this is like, that song alone probably influenced, you know, a lot of that um, quote unquote melodic. Um, melodic death metal, melodic black metal from the Swedes in the 90s. And uh, yeah. last but not least, in order of significance. Last but not least, in order of significance. The OG Haunting the Chapel, number one, Order of Significance, for Captor of Sin, Chemical Warfare, and Haunting the Chapel, those three songs to be released in 1984 is nuts. That's, it's, I mean, there. you even see stuff quoting from, from Kirk Hammett on the internet, you know, like, some of those old VHS tapes, like, you know, like, what the hell? What the hell happened to Slayer between 1983 and 1984? Because this is, this is nuts. I mean, chemical warfare. The, <laughs> completely insane, man. Borderline death metal already back then, 1984. That's how I feel about it. That's how I feel about it now. I don't know. I would probably feel different tomorrow about... This is a 22-minute video. That's crazy. But yeah, that's how I feel about the Slayer records. You know? I mean, obviously, Raining Blood is the best one. Whatever. But you know what? Um, in order of how those things hit, the significance and, the, and um, you know, the influence they put on other musicians and the waves that it made in the underground at the time and not that I was there for in 1984 and 85. But I mean, a lot of my friends were a few years older and, and did get to talk about when those records came out. And I can just imagine, I can just imagine, you know. Um, anyway, that's the video for today, it was a long one. I never did one of these ranking or whatever. I don't know if you want to even call it a ranking. But um, yeah, that's uh, how I feel about the Basically, they went <laughs> from the earliest to the, but with a couple of uh, a couple of little uh, hiccups in there. But anyway, that's the video for today. Shallow 666. Check out the other stuff I got out, other videos um, on the channel, and uh, there's links in the description. Yeah, Slayer always duh. Slayer always duh. And. 
666. Yeah.